What's going on guys? Welcome back to the PowerPoint Club. On today's video, we are taking it all the way back to the beginning with our ultimate beginner's guide to PowerPoint. If you're a new PowerPoint user and you don't quite know where to start, this is definitely the video for you. It will quickly teach you the basics to get you up and running and creating presentations. So let's get started. Open up PowerPoint on your machine. I'm using the latest 365 version, but to be honest, for the key foundation elements we're gonna go through, not much has changed from the older versions. So please don't worry. You 2007 users, we got you covered. So when we open PowerPoint, we get this screen, which is essentially asking us what we want to do. Start a new presentation or open up a recent file we've already worked on. For new files, we can choose what kind of presentation style we want. We can choose a blank presentation, which is the most basic, but it gives you a blank slate to create your own style. Or we can choose one of Microsoft's pre-designed templates or themes. As you can see, we have a ton of different pre-designed themes that we can use as a starting point. I'm gonna choose a blank presentation just to make it nice and simple, but definitely check out these pre-designed themes as there are some really cool options that could save you a ton of work. So now we have our blank presentation, let's take a quick look at our workspace. At the top, we have our tabs. Within each tab, we have what Microsoft calls the ribbon. It's basically a bunch of tools related to that particular tab. For example, within the insert tab, we can insert elements into our slide, such as charts, pictures, shapes, text boxes, audio, video. The animations tab, we can add animation. The view tab gives us all our view options and so on and so forth. Within the ribbon, basic functions are grouped together. The small buttons in the bottom right are launch buttons. Clicking these will expand your options for that particular tool group. This area in the middle is our actual slide. On the left is our preview pane. Think of it as a miniature version of that particular slide. So that's the basic layout of our workspace and everything you need to start creating your presentations. So on our first slide, you might be thinking, what are these boxes? I didn't add them. Who put them there? Well, within any file, whether a blank like we have or a pre-designed theme, you get several predefined layouts. Now, think of a layout as opening up a wardrobe and picking out a pair of shoes that work best for your outfit. Or in our case, what layout works best for our content on that particular slide. If you need a title slide, you've got one. If you need a content slide with bullet points, you can choose that one. Simply click and your slide will update to that layout. These boxes are simply placeholders for information for that particular layout. If you don't want them, just delete them. As this is our first slide, let's make this a title slide. Go ahead and click inside your placeholder and type out your text. The second box can be your name or whatever you want. So boom, that's our first slide done. Notice our thumbnail updates on the left and gives us a small view of this slide. So let's go ahead and add a few more content slides. To add a new slide, you can do this in a couple of different ways. Right click in your thumbnail window and hit new slide or hit the home tab and choose new slides. And from there, you can select the layout you think you might need. I wanna add some bullet points. So I'll select the title and content layout. Let's add a title and some text. Again, simply click in the placeholders and type out your text. It's that easy. Just choose the layout you want and add in your content. You can edit the layout on each slide as much as you want. So now we know how to create a new presentation, how to add new slides and how to choose the appropriate layout. The next step is to start adding content to our slides. 
let's add in a blank slide. So let's hit the home tab, new slide, and let's choose blank. When adding our content, we want to use the insert tab. From here, we can insert text boxes, images, videos, shapes, audio charts, all that good stuff to make your presentations look amazing. To start, let's keep it simple and add in a text box. With the insert tab clicked, hit text box and simply click where you want that text box to go and start typing. You can move that text box around wherever you want on the slide. Say we want to change the style of that text. It's easy. With the home tab open, the home tab, by the way, is just a group of the most used functions. So go to the font group and from there you have a bunch of options to edit that text. Color, font, size, alignment, line spacing and a ton more. Easy, right? Okay, so let's add a photo. Hit the insert tab again and choose pictures. Select from this device to locate the image on your computer and double click to bring that onto your slide. Now with the image selected, we now get access to a picture format tab where we can edit our image, we can crop, resize and even add effects. So how do we go about changing that background? Right click anywhere on your slide and hit format background. We get the task pane on the right. The task pane is super handy to further edit elements on your slide. Now I have this open all the time as it automatically changes to whatever element you have selected. To change the background, simply choose one of the options. We can change it to a solid color, a gradient, or even use an image as a background. Easy peasy, right? So let's go ahead and create a simple slide together using what we've just learned. So add a new slide. Let's choose title only. Right click and let's format this background. I'm gonna choose this image on my computer for the background. Let's now give this slide a title. Click in the placeholder and type out your text. From the home tab, let's change the color and the font. Back to the insert tab again, and let's insert a new text box. Type out some text, and again, let's change the color and the font. Duplicate this text box three times. With it selected, hit Control D on your keyboard. and let's roughly space these out. Now let's insert some more images. Back to insert, hit picture, and let's grab these three images from our computer. Let's resize these and space them out. So there we have a super simple slide, only using a few of the basic functions. So let's take a look at how our slide will look in slideshow mode. Slideshow mode is the presentation view that you'll use to present your content. It just takes your slides and makes them full screen. Hit this button down here to run your slideshow or a keyboard shortcut is F5. Now we're full screen and this is what your audience will see. To advance slides or to click through animations, you can hit spacebar, the enter key or right arrow. To go back, hit the left arrow. Let's hit the ESC button on our keyboard to go back to our normal view. Another good button to get familiar with is the slide sorter view, which is this little guy down here. It's super useful when you have a lot of slides. Think of it as a top down view of your presentation where you can jump quickly to certain slides. Just double click a slide to jump to it. The next thing we can do is to add some animation and transitions to our slides. A lot of new users get these two confused. Animations to animate elements on the slides and use transitions to get from one slide to another. 
Animations have four basic options. An entrance animation, which brings elements onto the slide. An emphasis animation, which brings attention to elements already on the slide. An exit animation, you guessed it, it takes elements off the screen. And we also have motion paths, which can be used to move objects and elements around the screen. Before we animate our elements, let's group the text and the images into three objects. Select them both and then right click your mouse and hit group or a keyboard shortcut is Ctrl G. Let's do this for each. Okay, so let's hit the animation tab. Straight off, we are shown the most used animations. As PowerPoint has guessed, that's kind of what we want to do. We also have a few settings over here to fine tune our animations. The first thing we want to do is open up our animation task pane. This allows us to see what animations we have, how they work. So let's hit that button to open it. As you can see, it's empty at the moment as we haven't applied any animation settings. But as we go through and add animations, each one will show up here. It's super useful to see what animations you have and what order they're going to play in. So let's go ahead and animate these groups. I want to bring each object onto the slide. So I'm going to use an entrance animation and these are always color coded green. I'm going to choose the float in animation. So with my element selected, simply click that button. And now the animation has been applied to that group. Notice how the animation pane on the right tells us we now have one. This mouse icon tells us that the animation will not appear until we click our mouse. The green bar lets us know it's an entrance effect. We can adjust how long this animation lasts by either dragging that bar to the left or the right, or using the timing group here to manually input how long we want it to last. We can change that animation at any point by clicking another option and it will automatically update for us. So let's add animations to each of these groups. As we can see, we now have three animations. Each one is set to play on a mouse click and each is set to last for one second. So let's take a look in slideshow mode to see how it looks. Hitting spacebar to advance our animations. Hit ESC on your keyboard and let's drop back out to normal view. We have three options to how these animations work. On a mouse click, with previous animation, which means they will come on at the same time, or after previous, which means they will play automatically one after the other. The animation pane does a good job of visualizing this for us. Let's hit slideshow again and see what we have. They look great and will definitely add a little bit of life to that slide. Okay, so we're happy with those animations. Let's add some transitions to our slides. Remember, transitions are how we get from one slide to the next. Click the slide that you want to get to, not the current one, it's always the one after. And let's hit the transition tab. Again, we get the most used options, but we can hit this little arrow to expand our choices. It's as easy as just hitting the one you want. We'll always get a preview as to what it will look like. So have a play and see which one tickles your fancy. I'm going to choose the cover transition and apply these to all of our slides. Let's hit slideshow and let's see how these look. Awesome. Now I'll send a special prize to anyone that can sneak in the origami transition to a presentation. I dare you. Unlike the animation pane where we can see what we have, we don't get that option for transitions, but we do get this little star to tell us that we have a transition for that slide. Now, a word of warning for animations and transitions. Less is always more. The crazy effects have their place and you can absolutely go nuts with them. But a pro tip is to keep it classy, keep it simple and keep it consistent. So that's it guys. PowerPoint basics done. The workspace, inserting content, editing elements and creating animations for your slides. All the skills to get you creating and presenting. As always, thanks for checking out the video and stopping by the channel. 
I hope you find the videos useful. Hit that subscribe button and please drop me any comments about stuff you want to learn and stuff you want to see. Stay safe and I'll see you on the next video.